How much do you love the truth? Do you love the truth enough to turn against people that you respect when they lie? That's been a very hard thing for me over the years because a lot of the men that I considered uh, spiritual mentors at one point in time or another, um, I see them going off and and uh, I've seen some of them, they go off and, and uh, you know, they'll, they'll say things that are, I know are wrong, not in line with scripture, and I know why they're doing it, and it bothers me, and I, I think I don't want to tear the guy's ministry down, I don't, want to, I don't want to hurt, you know, what he's doing for the Lord and whatever else, and I can't tell you how many times I've had to just finally get to the point where I just say, oh, and I have to remove my endorsement for somebody again because they just get so far out and so just like off the deep end and I'm just going, uh, and, um, you know, I've been contacted for years now. Um, people sending me stuff that Sam Gipp has done and, and, um, and it's just like, he's said so many things and I'm just like going, oh, brother, you know, I remember uh, somebody sent me a thing a while back uh, where Sam Gipp was at some one of these Baptist cult buildings, and and uh, you know he was up there and he's telling people you need to give your tithe, and you, you know once you give your ten percent, so that your ten percent is what God requires, and when you give over and above that ten percent, that's when you're going to get rewarded for it. And it's just like it's, there's no scripture at all to prove that. The tithe thing is a complete total lie. It's organized religion. I mean, it's just. You know, and it's like the Bible teaches you cannot serve God and mammon. Why are you lying to get money in to pay the stupid building that you shouldn't have in the first place that has no basis in Scripture? So I was made aware of this thing that Sam Gipp has just said recently. He's at some Catholic cult building thing. You know, you just get Baptist celebrity. You just get shipped around. You just go travel the world visiting Baptists and then pretending that you're brave and strong because you go hang out at Baptist churches and you how the people come there to emulate you and worship you, you know. Again, I've seen that. I've seen it with Gip. I've seen it with Ruckman. I've seen it with a lot of these guys, you know. I saw it with myself. I've gone to Baptist churches and spoken at Baptist churches. And people come up, oh, Brother Ryan, oh, you're so wonderful and stuff. That's one of many reasons why I'm not a Baptist and never will be a Baptist again. And, you know, it's just ridiculous. I'm going to be playing the video here um it's it's disgusting steven anderson actually came out with this thing and he's rebuking gip and i was shown this thing and it's just like he made aware of it and it's like i'm looking at this thing and i'm like yeah hey, you're taking him out of context and he said no i'm not taking him out of context here's the whole sermon posted it on the channel i'm going to be showing that parts of the video and it's just it's just blatant heresy just absolute total blatant heresy Gip is saying that it was almost, he's implying strongly that it was a mistake that Joseph and Mary named their son Jesus. It should have been Emmanuel. And he skips a verse, verse 21 in Matthew chapter uh, 1. He skips a verse. Doesn't even read the verse where the angel tells them that it's supposed to be Jesus. Name him Jesus. And he lies about the name of the angel. The, the text doesn't even say this, you know. You'll you'll see the video. It's 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 unreal, you know. And um, wait, I'm just gonna play it here, and and I'm probably gonna repeat some of the things because I've already shot the video. It's actually over on my computer rendering right now, Camtasia video. So it's I want you to see it, the original copy, not you know a thing that I take down and then cut clips out of it and stuff. It's gonna be the full length thing there, and um, I'm gonna play parts of it. So let's watch it. I'll come back and make some comments when it's done. All right, I'm gonna play this video here. This is the whole thing. Uh, Anderson is the one to put this up, unfortunately. It's a shame to see that a guy like Sam Gipp would be exposed by someone like Anderson, and Anderson turned out to be right. Uh, what a shame, and uh, shame on Dr. Gipp for this on Sam Gipp. Well, I shouldn't even call him Dr. Gipp, whatever. But uh, this, he has the whole thing here. Um, so you can see he's not being taken out of context. But I'm going to play the first part of it here. Uh, it's just unreal what Sam Gibbs says at the beginning. Play a little bit here. Amen. Good to be saved. Good to be in church. Good to see me. Okay, by this time tomorrow, Stephen Anderson will make a video of me saying that and say something about it. I am blessed. 
And I'll tell you why I am blessed. You know, uh, <clears throat> let me tell you what you guys got to do, all of you, uh, all of us. Get rid of your pride. You know, by pride come with contention. I am not sure that pride isn't the worst sin that there is because pride is what keeps the lost man from getting saved. Pride is what keeps a Christian from getting right. Pride is what keeps somebody from saying, you're right, I'm wrong. Isn't that true? And I got a lot of problems. I don't have a pride problem. Don't have a pride problem. Ah, uh, yes, you do. Yep, yes, you do. That's why you're still hanging on to things that are unscriptural, like the Sunday best and the church building and all this other stuff that has no basis in scripture. That's why you hang on to it. That's why Ruckman hung on to it. Let me tell you something. The door of revelation, the Holy Spirit revealing things to you, it will close the minute that you turn away from the truth of God's word. And when there's nothing in scripture that talks about these stinking Babel buildings, these church buildings, these social clubs, you know, all the old time faith, it hasn't even been around for more than a couple hundred years. Christians never worshipped in these buildings. It's Catholic. It's pagan. I mean, good night. You know, and Ruckman, you know, it's, it's, it, the minute you get a church building, it's anti-New Testament. It's in his book. I showed the video of it. But you guys are just, you got it all together. You know, and Sam Gipp in, a, in another study here I listened to, he was uh, making fun of Stephen Anderson because Stephen Anderson doesn't have a big church. That's not even a valid point. Sam Gipp is filled with pride. All kinds of pride. But let's 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 go forward here. See where the thing is. An hour and fifty three minutes in. It's just it's it's disgusting. And and Sam Gip just puts on a show the whole way through the thing. Just just this acting stuff. It just it's disgusting. And 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 another thing about Sam Gip too that I've heard for years and years and years. And it's, it's, I'm just I'm fed up with it. He jokes all the time about fast food and overeating and soda, drinking soda and things like this. Makes fun of natural health and ingesting and stuff like this. That's not funny. Okay. It's called foolish jesting. People are suffering with their health failing. You don't joke about that. You don't joke and, and tell people, yeah, I get my herbs from Kentucky Fried Chicken and stuff. I said that in another one of his studies recently. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. Is the whole thing, you know, and, and I'm not going to stand up for him anymore. This is it's it's ridiculous. I mean, I've I've years and years. Whatever. Let me continue here. An hour and fifty two minutes, fifty three seconds. We'll just let it play here for a minute. And here's where he says his heresy thing about Jesus. The remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as the dew from the Lord. Verse eight. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. Verse 9, Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. The people that hate the Jews will be cut off, not the Jews. Number 14, Zechariah chapter, I love this. I love this. Okay, here we go. Please pay attention to what he's saying. All right, I'm going to be pausing periodically and refuting this from Scripture, because he makes a whole lot of very, very, very ridiculous points here. Uh, they're just heretical. There's no nice way to put this thing. Um, let me uh, let me let me show you something. Go to Matthew chapter one. Mm -hmm. It's just better to look at the book for this. Yeah, it's better to look at the book for this. He takes them to Matthew chapter one. He doesn't even show them. He skips a verse and uh, ends up teaching heresy. Matthew chapter 1. In Matthew chapter 1, this angel's talking to J uh, Joseph. Joseph finds out that Mary's with child. He's going to dispose of her in a nice way. He doesn't want her killed. She should be stoned because she's been, she's been immoral. That's what he thinks. And so he wants to put her away quietly. And an angel comes and talks to him. Can anybody guess the name of the angel? Absolutely. It was Gabriel. Absolutely, it was Gabriel. Uh, no, it was not. Okay, and this is this is completely adding to the text. Let me just show you really quickly. You go down to here, verse 19, and then it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord, right there, appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, it goes down through there. Um, and just to show you, the name Gabriel shows up in Daniel 8, 16, Daniel 9, 21, 
in Luke 1.19 and Luke 1.26. And if you look this up, this is when Gabriel is talking to uh, Zacharias, I, th I think, and, he, and he's talking about, just go there real quick. Um, Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. I'm talking about John the Baptist being born. Okay. Uh, there's no place in Matthew chapter t chapter 1 that says about this angel being Gabriel. So he lied right there. It's Gabriel. It's Gabriel. The, the, the text doesn't say that. It does not say that one bit. Okay, the angel of the Lord is often a reference to the Lord himself. Let's continue. Wasn't Michael because he continues on. Anyway, and, and look what it says, verse 30, uh, 23. Behold, out of verse 22. Now all this was... Okay, look at verse 22. Let's start at 22. Why don't we start at verse 21? Okay. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall give his people, or she shall save his people from their sins. Jesus. Very emphatic. All capital letters. Um, Lord wants to get your attention there. Verse 22, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall be, bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus has many titles okay, throughout the scriptures. King of kings, Lord of lords, Emmanuel. Here, you see this. But the name that he's called is Jesus. Why? Because the angel told him to do it in verse 21. Sam Gip never reads verse 21. Listen to what he implies. It's, it's disgusting. Listen to this. Done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Remember these words. God with us. Okay. And he's right. Remember those words. God with us us. It's going to come out later he teaches heresy again. You know what? If you say in Hebrew Emmanuel, the E-L is God. Emmanuel, you are saying God with us. If somebody's name, I preach for a guy named Emmanuel in the uh, Philippines, uh, that his name is God with us. Okay? So <clears throat> Emmanuel means God with us. So this angel comes to Joseph and says, don't put her away. This thing is of God, and this baby's name is going to be Emmanuel. Right? Uh, wrong. Uh, you skipped verse 21. Yep. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being raised from, the sleep, uh, from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth the firstborn son, and called his name Emmanuel. They didn't call him Emmanuel. He said, hey, you're going to have a kid? His name's going to be Emmanuel. He says, hey, Joe, she had the baby. What do you call him? Jesus. <laughs> Say, what? how could that be? Real simple. God with us. The Bible says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Instead, we know him as Jesus. And what does Jesus mean? It means Jehovah saves. Oh, that's what we need, isn't it? We need Jehovah saves. Okay, let me just stop here for a minute. Um, I am, I'm not even sure what all he's trying to say by this. Like, I guess it was some kind of a thing where uh, Jesus was supposed to be called Emmanuel, but because the Jews were going to reject him, um, then it was just always just kind of dropped down to Jesus then. Or just, you know, instead of Emmanuel, we'll just say it's Jesus. So it's not God with us, because that's what the Jews would have received as their Messiah. It's just Jesus. Kind of like, you know, before Jesus was born, it was already preordained that the Jews are going to reject him as their Messiah. Then why on earth would the Lord have said about, uh, you know, he would have gathered them as a mother hen doth her chicks under his wings, but ye would not. They were given the chance to accept or reject him as their Messiah. It's weird. I don't know where on earth Gip is coming up with this stuff. But he never got this. Now, I don't know if I... Yeah, 
he never got this. What on earth does he mean by that? He never got this. Mentioned yesterday, or sometime earlier, before the Lord came to the manger, it, the Trinity was in heaven. Nobody ever said, let's go by the throne and see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, nobody went, you know, before the throne and said the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Again, you know, it, it just, you got to be careful with this stuff. I mean, he's teaching things that are just heretical. Um, trying to think of where this is. Chapter 3. I'm just doing this thing ad lib. I'm sorry. I'm not. My brain is a little bit. Just I'm shocked by all this stuff. Chapter 3. Okay. No one was saying that Jesus was the son or whatever. Basically there. It was that Jesus is the word is what the gift is going to be saying here. But Daniel chapter 3 verse 25. You have Nebuchadnezzar. He looks into the furnace and he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Nobody called him the Son back in the Old Testament. See, Gip is supposed to be a Bible, a King James Bible believing Christian. And I believe he is. But the problem is, you know, this this going around and putting on these shows at these Baptist church buildings. They're doing all the stuff that's unscriptural and pretending that, oh, it's, it's, this is where the old time faith, where they all ask for the old paths. It's on the back wall there, you know, everything of this Babel building. It messes you up after a while. Oh, I'm going to serve Lord the pagan temple and just, uh, it's going to go good for us, you know, and, and half the pagan temples are under 501c3 or what used to be 501c3 because Trump overthrew that, which I guess he'd be all for, you know, Gip. Let's continue. You'll see this. It say you'll say about the word of God. They said, "Let's go by the throne and see the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost." He got that name Jesus when he was born. Now, one of these days, the Lord's going to come back. He's going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. He's going to rule the universe. Correct? Yes, premillennial coming of Jesus Christ. But watch this satanic heresy that get pulls off. I mean, this there, there's no nice way for me to put this. This is satanic. You know, Gip, you need to be ashamed of yourself for this. This is ridiculous. And nobody is going to say, well, let's go to Jerusalem and see Jesus. They're going to say, let's go to Jerusalem and see God with us. You say, are you sure about that? Turn your Bible to Zechariah chapter 8. Turn your Bible to Zechariah chapter 8. Doesn't have any pride. Yes, he does. Zechariah chapter 8. I love this passage. And this is future. Look at verse 22. Yea, many people and strong nations, here it is, shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. Is the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem now? No. Then there's going to be a day when he is, which we all believe, right? Well, look what they're going to do. Look what the nations are going to do when they go to Israel, go to Jerusalem. To seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord, thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that, what's it say? God is with you. That's Emmanuel. That's Emmanuel. <laughs> um, well, that's what Emmanuel means, but that's not the name Emmanuel. And, uh, you know, what he said earlier there, um, you know, you've got to make sure there in the Matthew chapter 1, remember these words and stuff. Let me show you that again. Matthew chapter 1. God with us. He said, God with us, right up there on the little whiteboard thing, God with us. Remember those words. That's what Emmanuel means. It's being interpreted there. And then he goes back to Zechariah chapter 8. Down to verse 22, God is with you. God with us. God is with you. So you can see it's obviously that they're calling, they're not saying Jesus anymore. It's his name's Emmanuel now. See, 
See, again, you know, I'm dispensational. And you have to rightly divide the word of truth. But these guys are jumping way out into the book of Revelation. In the time of Jacob's trouble, they're jumping way into the millennial kingdom. And they're just going, I can figure it out because I'm a Baptist. And I have, you know, I go around speaking at church buildings and stuff like this. And I got a PhD and all this other stuff. Pride, pride, pride. You don't, you don't even know what he's talking about, you know. And again, I, I see this whole thing. Okay, here's how it's going to work. This neat little outline and things that because, you know, when Jesus came the first time, the Jews rejected him as God manifest in the flesh as their Messiah. So that title, Emmanuel, was put off until the millennial kingdom. Oh, and you, oh, that's so impressive. No, it's stupid. It's a lie. His name is Jesus. And it will be Jesus from now the whole way through eternity. Emmanuel is just one another, another one of the names. Just like King of Kings, Lord of Lords. It's a title. It's a, it's, a, it's a descriptive of who he is. But his name is Jesus. And even a heretic like Anderson knows that. Gifts making a fool of himself and of Bible-believing Christians. Let's continue. Look at Revelation chapter 21. Guys, this is a good book. Now take it back. Okay, Steve, get this sound bite. The Bible is not a good book. It's the good book. It's not a good book on a list of good books. It is the good book, and it's the only one on the list. Say, how good is it? Watch God say this. Remember over and over, over and over? Revelation chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the... Uh, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice, now watch, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. God with us, Emmanuel. But he's not done. And he shall dwell with them, Emmanuel. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. God with him, God with him, God with him. So one of these days, he's going to be with us. He's going to be with them, and people will go to Jerusalem. And it says people out of ten nations will grab a hold of a skirt of a Jew and say, you go to Jerusalem? Oh, man, you guys, can I go with you? Because we've heard God's with you. Because he is. Um, page seven. Okay. He was on to the next subject, so don't say, well, then you, you cut it, and he didn't get to explain, and he didn't come back and say, now, I know what you're thinking, and, you know, Jesus is the name. He left it at that, brethren. Gip left it at saying, because it says, you know, we know that God is with you, and God is, you know, the temple of, you know, all of See, it just it messes my head up after a while. I'm like, I can't even think of the scriptures. Tabernacle of God is with men. God with us. That's Emmanuel. Right there is the name. What? It's stupid. Stupid nonsense. Look at this. Chapter 20. Let's go to the previous chapter, right? Because when Jesus comes back, no one's going to be going and saying, let's worship Jesus there, you know? Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Stop right there. So we can see in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's still the name of Jesus. And look at the rest of the verse. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Uh, it should be, and they lived and reigned with Emmanuel a thousand years. No, it doesn't say that. I'll show you another little interesting nugget here real quickly. Emmanuel. Matthew 1.23. Um, well, if uh, Jesus is called Emmanuel in the Millennial Kingdom, don't you think there would be more than one reference? Nobody's going to be saying the name Jesus during the Millennial Kingdom. That is heresy. Again, you know, down here, verse 20, or chapter 20, verse 6 in Revelation. Uh, they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Uh, 
I mean, it's insanity what Gip is saying here. Let's go back to the last chapter here, chapter 22. What does Jesus call himself after the millennial kingdom? I, Jesus, right from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So I guess apparently um, Jesus will still be calling himself Jesus and you know people in the times of trouble will be saying Jesus but then the millennial kingdom the Jews will be coming back saying Emmanuel not the name of Jesus and the other people will say Emmanuel but then when they when the you know at the end of the millennial kingdom and the, and the great way through judgment then we switch back to saying Jesus again apparently. It's an embarrassment. It really is. So there you have it. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? We have to judge within our own house. You say, well, brother, that's going to give the lost a chance to blaspheme and the lost to things and stuff like this. Yeah, you know, that's a consideration. But you know what? I think it's a far worse offense when the lost sees that Christians are covering up for other wicked people within professing Christianity. You know, I came out a, a while back and I did a video refuting, a, and, well, not refuting, but showing a, Jack Hiles was a, just a total crooked con man. And, you know, it vexes me very, very greatly um, to see men that I respect, one of which is Peter Ruckman. I have a lot of his books and things. And I've seen Ruckman defend Jack Hiles. Watched him not long ago. I saw somebody posted a, one of his studies, and he got on the subject of Jack Hiles. And he's like, you know, people saying he's committing adultery with his deacon's wife. And he's like, oh, that's none of your business. You know, that, that, that's, that's none of your business and stuff. And I'm thinking, none of your business? Some guy's involved in sex perversion, Jack Hiles, he's a con artist, lies perpetually, and, and, and getting young girls to sing songs in honor of him. You know, I've showed the, the proof. I mean, the guy was a total stinking snake, and then to see his, his uh, funeral service, and they're just like idolizing him, worshiping him and stuff like this. He's going to be up there with God and on the throne, and I mean, he's just going to be, it's just going to be like, maybe we can get some permission to speak to Jack Hiles when we get to heaven. Just disgusting. Makes me want to vomit, you know. And then to see men that I respect going, oh, Brother Hiles, you know, don't speak against Brother Hiles. This is the one, one of the biggest reasons why I totally quit the whole Baptist system. The Baptist system, in many ways, is more wicked than Roman Catholicism. Why? Because of the pride. Absolute, total pride that these guys have. I mean, I've been in the Baptist churches and you just, oh, you don't speak against the man of God. You don't speak against the preacher. How dare you, you know, and all this stuff. Wicked. Totally, completely wicked. You know. Just, it, uh, brother. So, what we have to deal with here is another guy, Sam Gipp. Um, he needs to turn from this whole thing. I got my audio on over here. Give me a minute. Okay. Excuse me there for a minute. My computer just finished rendering the Camtasia video that I shot. So, but you know, I, I, I got to admit to a fault here. Okay. I, I'm going to confess something. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit in other studies. And, you know, I was raised up with the whole thing of, you know, when I found out about the King James Bible, led me to Sam Gipp. The first book I ever bought on the Bible version issue, uh, it's here someplace, I'm not even sure where it is right now, uh, the answer book. Uh, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I have it someplace. The answer book by Sam Gipp. First book I ever purchased, first book I ever read on the Bible version issue. It was Gip that led me into the thing of being a King James Bible believer. Then I got Gail Ripplinger's book, then I got some of Ruckman's, I got D.A. Waite. I read almost 
I can't say all of them, but I've read a lot of them. A lot of the Bible, you know, those that defend the, the King James Bible. And, you know, that led me into learning a lot from Ruckman. It learned, led me into learning a lot from these guys. And they really promote certain people. And, uh, you know, uh, one of which is, you know, Ruckman says one of his biggest influences was Sam Jones. Sam Jones, right here, the life and sayings of Sam P. Jones by his wife. Right there. Okay. And I read it, and, you know, I got the thing all marked up. I mean, it's I got all kinds of highlighted things and, you know, stuff like this. I thought he was a great man and all this. And you look at some of my older videos, and I'm like, you know, Sam Jones was a Bible-believing Christian. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He was a scoundrel. He was a lost man. He was a devil. If you know anything about Masonic hand signals, right there. You say, oh, come on, you're so conspiratorial. You think the Jesuits and the Masons and the Illuminati and blah, 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 they're behind everything. Oh, you're, you're just so conspiratorial and all this other stuff. Okay, this is his wife that wrote this. All right. <clears throat> she says, page 347 under the funeral service, when Sam Jones died. I'll show you this in just a minute. Delegates from secret orders to which Mr. Jones belonged, composed the honorary escort and led the procession. You ready? The Rome Commandery of Knights Templar and local lodges of Masons and Knights of Pythias were well represented. Hero... He was, a, he was a Methodist, Sam Jones, but this guy's a hero to most of the Baptists. He was a hero to me for a while. And I see that, and I say, oh boy, you know, uh, um, uh, I don't know what to do about that. Had somebody send me the thing the one time with this man, Charles Spurgeon. Hand in the shirt. The hidden hand of masonry. And he's got a Greek Parthenon, you know, big Babel building over there in England. And this guy. Oh, the legendary Billy Sunday. Another Mason, Freemason, friend of John D. Rockefeller. Just totally, completely wicked. I don't know if I have it marked here. Uh... Yeah, Sunday also sat in the drawing rooms of the economic and social elite. John D. Rockefeller Jr. became a special friend. He invited Billy to New York, saw that funds were guaranteed to cover crusade expenses, and had both of the Sundays to dinner with him and his wife on several occasions. You know? So, you know, again, right there, this paragraph right here. Excuse me. You read it. And they, these are books promoting Billy Sunday. This is not an expose of Billy Sunday. Okay? So what do I do? Do I just continue to eulogize these men and just say, oh, they're great men and everything else? Um, no, I think we have to judge them. This is the standard, brethren. Okay? The truth is in this book. And when you see somebody and they're telling you that uh, Jesus actually, that the angel didn't tell them to call him Jesus. They called him, said it should have been Emmanuel, and they, they kind of made a mistake there. And, and in the millennial kingdom, it's going to be Jesus and things like this. That's heresy. And I don't care who says it. You see, the Corinthians were guilty of something. They were guilty of saying, I'm of Paul. I'm of Apollos. I'm of, you know, whoever. And they got rebuked for it. We're not supposed to be followers of men. Don't you ever dare call yourself a Denlingerite. Right? I'm not your mediator. I can be an elder to you. I can teach you the word of God. I can show you what the scriptures say. But that's your authority right there. And I have had to come out and apologize a number of times for things that I said that were wrong. Right? And I will do that. I don't have pride like some of the people think I do. 
All right. I, and, and, you know, when I say I don't have pride, it's, you know, when I'm falsely accused of pride, I do struggle with pride. I'm going to tell you that right now. I struggle with pride. I really do. And I wanted to be proud of this whole Baptist heritage and stuff. I mean, way back when I first got saved, I was a prideful Baptist like you wouldn't believe. Suit and tie wearing Baptist people come in. I'd be like, scum, you don't have a suit and tie on. You know, I was into that whole movement. The whole pride, I was up front, you know, and stuff and reading the Bible and teaching Sunday school and, and preaching different times and things like that. Filling in for the pastors and stuff. Pride. Pride is what that was. Pride that, you know, going to a Baptist church, we're not like those other people out there. Pride. That's all it was. I'm just going to have to be honest, brethren. Uh, what does Sam get connected to? I don't know. I have nothing that I can say. Well, I think he's actually, you know, like Sam Jones here, you know, stinking knight, you know, Roman commandery of the, the Knights Templar. You know, Roman Catholic order. But he's a great, you know, preacher that Baptists can look up to, a Bible-believing Christian can look up to. No, he was, a, he was a snake, just like Jack Hiles. And it's really, really upsetting to me to see Sam Gipp going down this road and saying things that are just completely heretical. But, you know, you get among the Baptists and you brag because, oh, brother so-and-so here, oh, you got a good church going here. Well, look at you, how many thousands of people you got going here. Pride, pride, pride. So I apologize. I apologize if I've ever promoted these guys. Um, it's been a it's a, one of the one of the most heartbreaking things that I've had to go through um, in my time in ministry. Ten years. I know you have been in ministry that long, and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I'm going to get kicked and stuff for this one. Whatever. I'm I'm used to it. <laughs> but one of the hardest things for me, one of the most heartbreaking things for me, is just to see people just getting so messed up, just so far off. And, and, you know, I try to put up with it for a while and I say, well, you know, okay, that's, you know, yeah, all right. You know. And after a while, I'm just like, I can't support this guy anymore. You know, you, you, I mean, if Sam Gipp doesn't repent of this thing, if he doesn't come out and, and, and give it a, an apology and just say, hey, I was wrong. You know, Jesus is going to be the name that's going to be there in the millennial kingdom. And, and I, was, I wasn't trying to imply that if there's no retraction of this, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Don't buy his books. Don't watch his videos. Um, you can't trust him. All right? Just as simple as that. And I think it's a real shame that somebody as heretical as Stephen Anderson has to come out. And I've heard Sam Gippen. He's like, you know, I, I think Stephen Anderson's a saved man. And, you know, I, uh, you know, all these different people. They're, oh, they're saved. Yeah, they're saved. They're wonderful and stuff like this. Ah, <sighs> oh, Brother. Ah, oh, man. I just get so sick and tired of it. I'll tell you what. Um, you know, it's just like this This world's just so screwed up right now. It's, <laughs> I'm just like going, how much more, Lord, do we got to put up with? I mean, yeah, I know your word says that there would come a falling away first, you know, and we we're definitely in that. Um, and, you know, I, I, I feel the pressure from it. I feel the pressure to quit the ministry and to feel the pressure to get messed up heretically and things like this. I feel it. It's a battle just all the time. You're feeling it if you're saved, you know. A lot of you aren't even in the ministry and things full-time like I am, and you're you're just like, man, I, I get letters and stuff from people, both, you know, emails and private messages and letters in the mail, and they're like, I don't know how you do it, you know. It's tough. It's tough sometimes. I mean, there's great pressure. But here's one of the big points to this whole thing, and I said this earlier, you know, I believe firmly that there is a path of sanctification the Lord puts you on when you get saved. The Bible talks about that. I've preached on this subject before. And when you are on that path of sanctification, the Lord's saying you're following the Lord. And at some point in time, He comes to a crossroads and He says, Hey, I'm going the right way. And you look in the right way and it says, This is going to make you very unpopular. You've got to walk away from these church buildings. There's no scripture to support these things. They support a, a false system where you get dressed up in your nice little Sunday you know, best and everything else, and you can live a certain way in, in church, but when you're not in church, you can live a different way in things, and, and you can say, we're Bible-believing Christians, Christians in all matters of faith and practice. 
and then pretend that your church building is somehow scriptural. Good to be in church. You mean the building. And Gip starts every single one of his, his, his little performances. He starts them all that way. Good to be in church. He means the stinking building. And then he'll lie and stuff about the tithe to get people to help pay the bills of these big stupid buildings that Christians shouldn't have in the first place. But what happens is, when you come to that, that fork in the road there, and the Lord says, I'm going this way, the Lord will leave you there. All right? And what happens is, when the Lord leaves you, when you get to a point in your walk with the Lord where He says, make your decision, you can see that plainly from Scripture, you've heard the arguments that this is wrong. Are you going to change? And you go, no, I'm going to stay right here. You're on your own. And you might have some truth in things that you can kind of squeak by for the rest of your life. But God drops you at that point in time. And you'll have all kinds of problems. I'm going to tell you right now, that's why Ruckman had a lot of his problems. Because of his pride. He knew. He knew. He knew the church building thing was unscriptural. But he just continues with it. I've known graduates of PBI and they say, yeah, you know, I got to a point where it was like, you know what, this isn't scriptural. This church building thing, I'm leaving it. And God blesses them. God has blessed me abundantly since I've gotten out of the whole Baptist cult system. But you get, you have to stay in that thing, you know, to keep that thing going. And you just, you keep saying about the glory days and all the great heroes of the faith and things like this. And somebody says, well, wasn't he a Mason? Oh, wow. let's not talk about that. You know, Jack Hiles, oh, wasn't he a pervert? Oh, well, you, it's just, uh, that's none of my business. Yeah, you're dealing, you're dealing with somebody that's on a shelf. That's what you're dealing with. That's why these guys have to continually preach and re-preach and re-preach and re-preach and re-preach the same sermons over and over and over again. Uh, there's a hymn. I'm trying to think of the words to it right now. Um, uh, the arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up for Jesus. You know, stand up for, stand up for Jesus. Yeah, the arm of flesh will fail you. you. You dare not trust your own. Brethren, you have to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Because man is going to fail you miserably. And I'm sorry if I've failed some of you in things like that, messed up and stuff and whatever else, not been real clear in some of the things I'm saying. But brethren, I'm not your standard. This is your standard. I mean, one more verse of Scripture here, you know, just to kind of give you something that you can go leave with here. Shut the video off. Because I realize most people don't even watch my videos anymore. <laughs> I get people, you got to think about this and you got to pray about that. And I'm like, I talked about that in a study. You know, I came out with my thing here recently about, you know, Jesus is is God the Father, and you know, showed went over John 14. And I thought I was thought I was very fair and open minded about it. And I get people going, you didn't consider this. And I'm like, I talked about that in the video. You're not even watching me. It's insane. Uh, Acts chapter 20, verses 28 through 32. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. That's what I try to do. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and, get, and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. It's the book, brethren. It's the book. We're losing another one from the ranks. I hope he repents. 
I hope Gip drops his pride and comes out and says, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, please pray for us. Um, I'm thankful that I'm not in some stinking dead church building that's just pagan temple and things like this. I just, I'm glad. Because uh, I'm places, I mean, they're just so filled with problems and, and errors and things like that. I just, oh. Uh, but uh, it gets real frustrating. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be it. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully it'll be a little bit help, happier of a subject. I just, <laughs> it gets, I know it gets so ridiculous at times. All you can do is just laugh about it. Just get like, uh, I rejoice in the Lord that, that uh, the fact that he, his word is true. That, um, that there would come a falling away. Yeah, it's true. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.